Hi, my name is Yongbo Aram Shim, and in this video, I like to present our work, FSPED, Video Game Interactions Using Force Feedback Gamepad. This work was done with Kunu, Sangyun, Jongmin, Taeyun, and advised by Kyok, all in Kaist. Back in the 90s, Nintendo and Sony brought a sense of touch, or haptics, into the video game world. Since then, the vibration has become a standard and has been inherited until now. However, talking about the sense of touch, there is a rather unexplored sensation in video games, force feedback. There are some force feedback or FFB gaming gears out there, and they are expected to possess huge potential for video games. From field of haptics, we could find out promising interactions that could be applied in game interactions. For example, we could simulate various gadgets such as gear shift, mechanical buttons, and many more that could be used as game components. Force feedback affords motion guidance, and novice gamers may benefit from it. We could also provide unique inputs. For example, Sharkani and his colleagues had used an force feedback slider as a slingshot game's input. Finally, supporting some game situations only with the haptic modality is possible, as shown in Dual Panto Project. Some have tried to demonstrate possibility of the force feedback game interactions through directly implementing the games, such as projects like Hapticast, Slingshot 3D, or Haptic Battle Pong. However, returning to these commercial force feedback gaming gears, they did not gain much fame as expected. This shows the controller ownership on Steam, a leading game platform, and the use of flight stick or racing wheel is indeed very small. Moreover, not all the devices in this portion supports force feedback, which means the pie gets even smaller. We suspect the form factor is the main problem. All these devices require a large, sp large space and are optimized to limited game genres such as flight or racing simulations. We may need a much general form factor to adapt force feedback interactions into video game environments. And that'll be the gamepad. They are overwhelming the environments. They are portable and could provide universal input to various game types. In order to facilitate the adoption of force feedback into the video game environments, we set these research goals in this study. We tried to implement a force feedback device in a gamepad form factor and develop what novel game interactions could be achieved on it. And here is a short teaser of the FS pad, our gamepad with a force feedback thumbstick inside. Thanks to its actuation mechanism and control system, the thumbstick could move by itself and could render various haptic structures. With no force output, it is stationary in its place, but when force is rendered, it returns to the center point mimicking a normal spring thumbstick for this case. And I'll go through how this device was implemented. This is the working mechanism of the FS pad. It has a common two-axis gimbal structure of ordinary thumbstick modules. Its axis is connected to coreless motors with a gear mechanism. The opposite side is connected to rotary potentiometers to sense the position of the stick. And for the firmware parts, our haptic control system is shown on the right. The TNC, an intermediate processor, does the majority of the haptic rendering. Owing to the intermediate structure, we could avoid slow data transmission between the PC and the actuators and alleviate the computing load. The role of PC in the system is to drive the game, apply the inputs such as stick position and button state changes to the game, and finally update the force map according to the game situations. Let me elaborate on the haptic rendering method. The FS pad is an open loop impedance control device, which means it outputs the desired force based on the position of the stick. We used a data structure of a pixel-based force vector table to represent the static rendering of force feedback. We call this a force map. The example figure shows the visualization of force map that simulates the spring model. One force map is always saved on the TNC. Therefore, the TNC gets the current stick position, index the position to the force map, interpolates the near force vectors, and finally controls the motors to output the calculated force. This cycle is repeated rapidly. Finally, we packaged the thumbstick module using the housing of the Xbox One controller. For the detailed construction and specification of the device, please refer to our paper. Now, I would like to show what novel game interactions could be enabled by the FSPED. We made force feedback game interaction scenarios through various sources such as brainstorming sessions, in-lab workshop, and an interview. 
We analyzed and categorized the scenarios into five themes referring to the haptic literature. The five themes are reconfigurable input, control skill guidance, invisible interaction, avatar state feedback, and dynamic event feedback. These are not completely exclusive to each other, which means several themes could be applied to a mutual game component. Let me briefly go through each theme. The first we have is the reconfigurable input theme. Video gamers always had their needs on optimizing the game controller for each game. This is why studies of affording switchable game input gadgets were done, such as NDF Hotswap Project or Voodoo IO Gaming Kit. Or for a commercial example, Xbox LE2 controller supports thumbstick adjustments. The haptic ability of the FS pad could transform a typical thumbstick into various input devices. FS pad could simulate game gimmicks and support various GUIs. For example, GUI could be supported as marking menu augmentation. Many games employ marking menu design for item selection. This is done by tilting the thumbstick to the desired item. FSPED could augment this design as shown on the right. The wall shown in as a gray area forms a physical track that guides the users to tilt the stick accurately. When the user tilts the stick to the end, a clicking feeling ensures that the item is selected. This clicking is given by the passive resistance shown in blue arrows. Also, the FS pad could transform into a manual gear shift for racing games. The render force feedback will provide the gamer the feeling of moving the gear stick following the physical track, and a clicking feeling also when fitting into a specific gear level. Here is an implemented example of reconfigurable input theme. There is a lever widget, which is used to recreate a bridge over the river. The thumbstick simulates the mechanical property of the lever, which went up right now. The participants have to push the thumbstick down, overcoming the tactile detent. And you can hear the tactile detent following the noise. The second theme is control skill guidance. Game control needs training, either if the player is a novice or an expert. Some game components elicit delicate moves of the thumbsticks as skill moves in sport games or attack commands in fighting games. These games even provide a training mode and a preview of skill commands to teach the exact timing and the movement. FSPAD could boost this training by directly guiding the user's thumb. Here are some example scenarios. First, simply it could help to preview specific skill controls by actuating the thumbstick. The upper figure shows an iconic skill command in Tekken, a fighting game, and the following time sequence of the FS pad thumbstick's movements for previewing the skill. In addition, the theme could be used in game replays or streaming services so that the viewers could feel how the pro gamer or streamer controls the gamepad so skillfully. This is an implemented example. A uh, skill attack is activated when the user uh, flicks the thumbstick twice and then presses the button. This is provided as a preview so the user could click on the buttons to play it. And with the preview, the FS pad directly moves following the comments so that the users could feel the timing and direction while putting their thumb on it. And here is the third theme. The invisible interaction theme literally includes the force feedback game components that could be done behind the screen. Basically, we want to transmit some non-visual information such as hints on visually hidden items or skill trigger timings. The users may find a treasure from nowhere, as in the figure using the stim. Here is a specific example, playing baseball game with a friend. Let us assume we are playing locally, so we are sharing the display. If I am the pitcher, the batter will be able to see what trajectory I am trying to throw, which makes the game unfair. For this case, we could eliminate the visual feedback of strike zone from the display and instead render it on the pitcher's FS pad. The pitcher may fill the strike zone as a square wall and place the ball inside that zone. Here I want to show you a specific example that we had implemented. It is a haptic lock puzzle. You want to match all three numbers for each ring to unlock, but have no visual hints. Instead, you could rotate the thumbstick and feel the tactile detents on it. You may hear the amplified noise in this video. And the slope with a stiff detent indicates the answer key. Again, the player cannot see any clue but feel it.
Next is the avatar state feedback theme. This theme simply represents the game avatar state to the thumbstick. For example, if the avatar is pushing a heavy boulder or trying to climb this cliff, the player will feel a resistance rendered on the thumbstick, which indicates the physical difficulty of the avatar doing that movement. This sort of game design already prevails in video games, and you could easily find games that represent the avatar state by slowing down the avatar, stopping it, or by applying a concept of stamina. The FS pad only puts a new expressive dimension on it. An implemented scenario is shown here. When the avatar is pushing the box, the participants feel a resistive force in the opposite direction to the pushing path. Finally, we introduced the dynamic event feedback, which is also very straightforward. This type of force feedback interaction was already actively used with commercial force feedback gaming gears, including the sudden effect of your airplane getting damaged or car crashes in racing games. Since the gamepad covers broader game genres, it could further express the dynamic events, such as the recoil of arm in shooting games or fierce attack from a giant monster. Here is an implemented example. This dragon monster attacks the avatar if it comes near. At the moment being attacked, the thumbstick flicks to the direction of the attack, as you can see in this clip. With the implemented device, we conducted a user study. We wanted to obtain feedback and collect insights from the real use of the FS pad. Potential users of the FS pad Four game players and four game practitioners participated in our study. The procedure was simple. We demonstrated our simple FSPED game and conducted an interview after the demo. The demo game was a 3D adventure type game implemented with the Unity engine. For realistic and objective feedback, we wanted to build a short but full game that harmonizes the game components and the FSPED interactions. The goal of the game is to control the Swordman avatar until the end points while defeating monsters and solving various puzzles. We applied all five interaction themes that were shown already, and we collected various user feedback during the study and grouped them for the report. Here, I will briefly point and pass through only the important parts. Please see our paper for details. Participants agreed that a game experience with the FS pad is novel and interesting. Participant 8 gave a great comment here, saying that he's happy to know that game pads can evolve further, both as a game player and a game developer. Participants recommended the FS pad will be particularly effective in specific genres such as adventure, puzzle, or horror games, giving examples with specific use cases. We found their actual needs for FSPED interactions. For one example, participant 3 directly pointed out the problem of using marking menu without any feedback in ordinary video game environment, therefore positively accepting the reconfigurable input theme. Participants also stated the force feedback surely differs from vibration feedback. They pointed out the different characteristics of two sensations and even suggested to combine them. In addition, they came up with their own novel FS pad interactions featuring various themes. In summary, we found that the users positively accept the FS pad and think it is novel. We also noticed the specific needs on the FS pad. So let me wrap up this presentation. We built FS pad, a force feedback gaming device with a gamepad form factor show various novel gaming interaction scenarios that could be achieved on it, and provided empirical findings from the user study. We also want to highlight that this project is open sourced, so please visit our website if you want to build or modify the FS pad. We provide all the 3D printable models, circuit diagrams, firmware, and building instructions here. That makes the end of this presentation. I'd like to thanks again my great collaborators and thank you for listening.